Welcome to Artistic Adventures. Are you ready for some hocus pocus? I hope so. We're going to start on Witch Sarah today and do her face and hair. All right. So you remember this picture from the last video? Uh, so we're going to start on Witch Sarah. And uh, basically we're going to do, you know, her wig and her face, which uh, will be kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure she's wearing a wig in that <laughs> video, in that uh, picture. So, you know, if it looks like a wig, it was a wig. So I use this Liquitex matte medium to put down the base coats on this uh, Monster High Dracula at all and let that dry for a good while. I think I put two coats, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I have my watercolor pencils and my pastels ready. So we're going to get started working on her face. So uh, the biggest, uh, I guess the, the biggest feature that stands out for her are, the, are her eyes. They're very dark and, and outlined and smoky. And she also has this one eyebrow that kind of arches up on one side. So those are kind of going to be her distinguishing features. She does have pretty, uh, pretty much pale skin. And I'm going to try to make that even more paler, <laughs> paler than it is now. Uh, so those are, those are kind of her distinguishing features, which are going to be different with uh, the other two witches because they have some features that we're going to actually try to mold with uh, a epoxy skull. So I start out, as usual, with uh, a lighter brown pen, pencil, watercolor pencil, and I'm um, just sort of sketching out the shape of the eyes and where I want everything to be so that they're symmetrical. And her eyes know really special shape, just, uh, you know, kind of a regular shape. So not really that difficult. And I'm going to have her eyes going off a little bit to the side because I think that that helps the expression. And on this side, I'm going to do the arched brow. So I'm starting out low and then going up high. And that's going to give her that arched look that she has in the picture. Now, the other brow is pretty much just straight across. And she has pretty thick brows and, and dark brows. And uh, they start out close to her eye. They're not, you know, there's not a lot of lid space above from the eye to the eyebrow except on that one where it's arched a little bit. So uh, that's going to be a big distinguishing factor, and I'm going to really, you know, try hard to get that part right. So on this eyebrow, I'm pretty much just going straight across, uh, starting near the eye, but the other one is arched up. So that's kind of the look for her, and that will help give her a little bit of a sinister look. Although she was kind of giddy, you know, and silly in the movie but she you know she was not a good person because she was singing and leading the children in so that they could uh basically suck the life out of them <laughs> so that's not good yeah so um this one uh this particular witch is not going to be that super hard to do because she doesn't have anything that that's going to be real difficult it's just going to be a matter of trying to get her facial expression similar to how it is in in the pictures. And that's mainly going to just be getting her eyes dark and getting the, uh, the right expression with, you know, the eyebrows and everything. So I'm um, basically just going back over that outline that I originally did and making it darker and darker and darker as we go along. Right now I'm putting a little bit of white into the conjunctiva of the eye. And as best I can tell in the photo, she has blue eyes. So we'll be giving her some blue irises. And I'm starting to add some black now to continue to darken up the outline of the eyes. I'm doing this a little bit slower than I usually do just because I know some of you are following along and uh, where I do speed it up, it's just very repetitive. Um, and I do try to show you, you know, slow it down and then show you the um, finished, what I've, you know, that section, if I've speeded it up, what it looks like afterwards. Uh, so right here, I'm adding the pupils in and doing that with the black pencil 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some black to the eyebrows because she has pretty dark thick eyebrows and it's kind of how I go along through this whole thing I just like keep going over and over things you know and that seems to add dimension to it for me and helps me to sort of take a little bit at a time so that I'm not committing too much color to one area before I'm sure that that's exactly what I want to do because I do make mistakes I yes I do and those are what we call adventures here on artistic adventures <laughs> so the uh also I think it helps you know to get the colors to deepen as you put more and more coats on so that's that's another aspect of this um the I like I did I think I told you in the beginning we did use the Liquitex matte medium I like Mr. Super Clear for the final coat but I still feel like I prefer the Liquitex matte medium for the base coat and that's that's where I'm at right now that's all subject to change so now I'm putting down the blue for her eyes I do a lighter color on the bottom of the iris and a darker color on the top because that is shade the top of the iris is shaded by the overhang of the eyelid and the lashes so that tends to be shadowed more and a little darker and uh, this uh, even gets a little bit darker as I go along because I keep putting down more color and then even put a little bit of black into that very top line but uh, basically using those two colors of blue for her eyes and then of course the black for the pupil and these are really her eye color because that's Sarah Jessica Parker Jessica Parker's eye color <laughs> because I looked it up and it kind of goes I guess with the blonde hair that that sort of look anyway <laughs> um I liked her character in the movie because she was so kind of goofy and silly, but yet at the same time she could turn around and be evil, you know, by trying to get the kids. And uh, the the favorite part for me was when the the zombie Billy comes up out of the grave, you know, and he looks horrible, of course, you know, he's like gray and decayed and everything, and she's like kind of flirty and goes, "Hi, Billy." <laughs> It's so funny. Really, she can't stop even after he's dead and gone. She's still flirting with him. All right, so we're this far along now. Uh, really going to start working on darkening up the eyes more. What were your favorite parts of the movie? Let me know in the comments below. It's just so so many that could be <laughs> favorites, I think. Um, this is uh, sort of a reddish orange color that I'm putting on her lips it's the reddest color I have in my pencil pack her lips are pretty dark red and as you'll see a little later on I'm adding some pastels to get this a little bit darker because I wasn't uh, quite happy with this shade completely and also wanted to sort of darken up the part between her lips because that gives it a little bit more dimension and her lips were not they didn't have like a big bow at the top, you know, a big Cupid's bow. She's, her lips kind of were thinner along the top and sort of straight. And um, so I did actually underdraw this a little bit uh, on the lips to make them not quite as full as, as they are molded here. So I'm just taking white pastel chalk and put that down over the matte medium, uh, trying to lighten up her facial features. Uh, her face her skin because her picture look I mean it really looks like she's kind of like a ghost really and uh, I will add a little bit of cheek contour but uh, mostly I'm just leaving her pa her face mostly just white not really doing a whole lot of shading other than I did a little bit around the nose and chin and stuff but we'll get to that here in a minute so I've got that down and um just uh, blue with my mouth you know just tried to get most of the excess of the chalk off and 
then as I said earlier, we're going to go back in now and just start really darkening up those eyes because if you look at the picture, that's just really outstanding is how dark her eyes are. I liked um the I liked the character for Bette Midler too. She she was just really great in that movie. Of course she's really one of my favorite actresses anyway. And of course a phenomenal singer. But um Sarah was, you know, sort of the foil to Bette being the smart one and Sarah was the goofy one. And I guess Mary, the other one, was like the practical one, or the she was kind of more good natured, I guess, in a evil sort of way. All right, so I've got more black around the eyes now, and more darkness to the pupils. And at this point, I'm just still building up color in the eyes, in the in the brows, and. Um, going to start adding some pastel shading around the eyes to give that really deep smoky look that she has. So I'm going to use a um, really tiny little brush here that's pretty stiff and that's going to help me control where I put the eyeshadow. So looking back at the picture again just how dramatic the eyes are and there's like a brown shadow around as well as the dark you know black of the uh, eyeliner and, and that sort of thing so in addition to putting the black watercolor pencil around the eyes this is going to really help shad shadow them and make them look you know that big dark dramatic look so I'm taking a really dark brown color uh, kicked off some of the excess powder because I don't really want to put it down too thick at first I like to to add it up in instead of uh, putting down thickness all at once because that's when I tend to make mistakes and have to erase it. So when I started doing this, I really could start to see the resemblance more. You know, she doesn't have so, you know, such a huge distinguishing look. So this part of it really is what makes it really look like her more than anything. Of course, once we get the hair and the, and the clothes on, you know, we'll bring this look all together. Sometimes it's hard, I find, anyway, when you first start doing these characters. Uh, so you might do the face, you know, and you're stuck with pretty much the mold of the face for whatever doll you're using, you know, unless you want to carve it or anything, which I don't want to carve these soft dolls myself. Um, and you sort of question where this is going. Is this really going to look like her or not? I don't think so. But... Uh, once you get the costume all together with the, the, you know, the dress and the hair and everything, it also, it all sort of ends up coming together. And that's that really part of the process that I love is that final minute when you've got the hair done, you've got the face done, you know, you're, you've put the costume on and then you turn the doll around and there she is, there's your character. And it's just, I don't know, magical to me. I really like like that part of the creative process. Um, so you can sort of see how that brown is uh, adding to her look. And I'm even adding a darker, thicker line of black across the top of the eyelid. And uh, not really winging it out that much, just uh, darkening the outside around the eyes. More on the top than the bottom. And Again, going back into the pupils and giving them a little bit more darkness. As you go and like make one area dark, it's like, oh, got to make another area dark because you kind of bring them all up together as you go along. So I'm doing the same thing on the other side, just making that eyeliner across the top a little bit thicker and darker and going over the bottom just a little bit. I use that cuticle stick that you saw me use there to, I wet it and then, and then uh, sort of get rid of some of the excess dampness. And that's a really good way to just sort of get rid of a little bit of the design that you're trying to get rid of, like if you make a mistake, because it's watercolor process, so, you know, it comes right up with that. And the wood sort of absorbs it, so, I don't know, that's just something I do. 
whatever works for you. Some people use erasers, and I, I've used erasers too, but if it's a little small area, I'm just trying to get rid of that cuticle stick works really well. All right, so just giving you another look of where we are right now. And I'm gonna go back to the lips, and I'm trying to darken those up with this pencil. But as I said, I wasn't really that happy with um, how dark I could get it with this pencil. And I wasn't really, I didn't really go want to go in with water on the pencil like I do sometimes because I think it would have just made it even more RNG red. And I really wanted to get more of a deep red look. So I'm using a really dark, dark sort of brick red uh, pastels. And I'm using a really thin but stiff brush to go into the crease. And that really brought out the, the redness that I wanted in the lips. And I, I spread that around to the top and the bottom lip as well, but more in the center. So that um, that really helped, I thought, give it the redness that I needed. I really, I don't know why this set, it's got either a pinkish red or this orange red. It's not like a true red. So uh, sometimes I have to improvise another adventure, right? So I just put a little bit of light paint uh, uh, across her brow bone there just to highlight it. Not really that noticeable, but more, in, you can see it better in, in person with a doll. And then I'm putting a little bit of that orange red into the tear duct area. So we all kind of have that sort of reddish look there. It's not as easy to see on these smaller dolls, but I did. And there I'm using that the cuticle stick again. I did put a little bit of gray color around the outer edges of the conjunctiva just to give it a little shadow so the eyeball looks a little rounder. And keep on going back to that black pencil to darken those eyes. Every time I look at it, I'm like, no, nah, it could be just a little bit darker. So I keep adding and I think, uh, you know, it definitely helped. I, I'm, I'm liking the way she ended up looking. So there's where we are at this point. We've got our arched brow. We've got our dark eyes. I'm darkening up the brows a little bit more. Making them a little bit more bushy. And I went a little bit too far with one stroke. And <laughs> like this one hair going meow up the brow, up the uh, forehead. So I had to get rid of that with the cuticle, cuticle stick. And putting it on a little bit more brown eyeshadow around the eyes. And now I took some uh, dark red and uh, kind of ran the brush over the paper towel to get some of the darkness, some of the chalk off. I didn't want to put too much down at one time. And I'm just doing that along the contour line of the cheek more to give her a sort of hollow cheek look as opposed to blush. It's really more to sort of define the uh, contour of the face. And then I'm adding some more white powder and uh, now I've got the dark brown that was on the eyeshadow brush and I didn't really put any more powder on it I just or chalk I'm just kind of going around the edges of the nose and the that creates the philtrum of under the nose that goes down to the cupid's bow put a little shadow in there and around the nostrils you find that with the brushes they're going to have a little bit of the powder the chalk on them you don't even have to put more if you kind of keep going over it and over it it'll give you that light shadow that you want instead of going back into the color and then you'd have too dark of a color but i wanted to give her nose a little bit more dimension and i went all the way up contouring the sides a little bit and I liked I liked that effect and just still adding more chalk and then some eyelashes on the bottom I am gonna put uh, false eyelashes on the on the doll and I promised uh, one of my viewers that I will do that a little bit slower so that you can see the whole process so when we get ready to do that I will do that a little bit slower than I tend to do it I don't like doing it. Maybe I speed it up so you can't see my mistakes. <laughs> All right, so let me get this in focus so you can see her a little bit better. There we go. 
All right, so there we are with our arched brow and shadowed eyes. But it seems like it's never enough. <laughs> Just keep adding more and more color. But that looks like it's going to be pretty good. I think that's going to really do it for the color. So now we're going to put a little bit of highlight into her eye. We're going to just take this round ball tool with a tiny bit of white acrylic paint and give her a little bit of a glint in the eye right over the pupil, right on top of the pupil on the left side of your screen. It was actually the right side of her face, but we'll do the same thing on the other side. You want to put your highlight uh, on the same, not different sides because the light's hitting the eye at the same angle so they would be both on the same side. Alright so we got that in there and that's the final look for now. So we're going to put some coats of Mr. Super Clear on outside and I did lose a section of tape this is kind of a little bit eerie. I'll tell you while I'm putting this gloss varnish on. This is Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. I put this on the eyes and the lips after I've put the Mr. Super Clear on to seal it. If you don't do it after the Mr. Super Clear, you know, the colors will run because it's a liquid and these are watercolor. But anyway, there's a section missing. I number all my sections so I'll know where to put them when I uh, add them to my editing software. And the section that's missing is number 13. <laughs> How about that? I'll let you know when that happens. <laughs> I just lost a whole section of what I was doing. But it's not, it's not too bad because it's not um, vital to what we're doing. So we have our, our uh, wig cap that I made. And I have lots of videos on making these. I just stretched t-shirt material over the doll's head on top of some plastic so it won't stick. And then put glue on top of that. Let it dry. Take it off, cut it out, cut out the shape around the ears and, and everything, and you've got your wig cap. So this has already been done. I typically do my videos with face up separate from the hair because they tend to be so long, but I'm cutting out some of the parts of this, like making the wig, wig cap, so it'll be a little bit uh, shorter. So we're going to make her hair out of this alpaca fiber because it's really just the perfect color. And she's the only one of the three where I want to have a little bit of uh, silkiness to the hair so it'll lay down and everything. I think with the other two I'm going to use yarn I think that they'll work better to do the hairstyles. Now she has a part kind of off center on the side so I'm making a mark here. And what I'm going to do is make a cut in the, in the wig cap because that's where we're going to put... Uh, some some of the fiber in to be able to make the part which will cover up the last sections that are glued. Alright, so we're going to take that off and just use some pointy scissors. I'm using my little sewing little, I guess they're like for embroidery or whatever. And stick that through and then we're going to cut a slit down the middle of this well it's actually not the middle it's the off to the side okay for that's our part and I put it pretty close to the edge because we want to be able to she's not gonna have bangs so you want to have you know be able to have that part go pretty close to the edge all right so I use just like this pet comb to comb out the fiber I've already combed out my little sections that I have laid out here what I'm doing now is adding similar size sections together and I'm going to glue all of these together at the top but I do them section by section and I do that because if you tried to do them all at one time like I'm doing it with my fingers the fiber in the middle would not the glue would not reach it so I'm taking these thin sections and I'm putting the glue on each section and then I will stick them all together to make one big thick section. 
but I'll be sure that they're all stuck together at that point. So this is just me taking each of those sections and putting some glue on it and then sticking it to the main stack. So we're stacking them up, putting the glue at the same place. And then I press those together again with my fingers. I'm using, um, you could probably tell I'm using E6000 to do this. I do that because it makes it waterproof. And I have not washed this alpaca fiber. I like to wash it after I make the wig usually. So um, this fiber is pretty clean. It just, it's a little bit uh, oily and uh, it'll lay a lot better once I get it washed and put some conditioner in it. So I'm gonna let that dry until it gets uh, nice and, and hard so that I can cut the top part off where it's uneven and then we'll stick it into the wig. But you can see how when you pull that apart that makes the little nice part and that's what will show on top of the head and that will we'll spread that hair out and cover the uh, areas that were glued up at the top. So I'm just going to cut off not all of the glue part of course because then it would have been a waste of time to glue it but enough so that uh, we have a nice uh, piece that we can stick down in there that that uh, still ensures that all the hairs are stuck together. Okay so now we're going to take that section and stick it down into the cut that we made in the wig cap and you want to pull it down past the point where the glue is. You don't want the glue to show you just want it to look like a natural part and then um, I did glue it to one side but be very careful when you do that you don't get the glue close to where the cut is in the hat or it will go up into the hair and then you'll have like this hard place in the hair <laughs> instead of a nice part. So you see I've got that pulled through and I'm just going to put a little glue really out at the very tip of where that's going to fold over to. I'm just going to fold it over to one side. I've done this a couple of different ways. Um, there's so many different ways that you can make wigs and certainly lots of videos about them but um, you know the most important thing is that you just want to try to cover up the ha the glue somehow or other. Now uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm going to put a really small section of the of the fiber right at the edge where that part will come and that will help to camouflage the edge of the wig cap because we're going to have to pull you know the the hair apart to make it frame her face and we don't want to have the wig cap show. It'll all come together, trust me, but I'm just putting this on the inside of the wig cap, right at the edge where the part would be. Just a very small section. Doesn't have to be that big. Now if you were going to do like an updo where you're pulling up the whole front, you could put some of that along the whole front and then when you pull it up it hides the wig cap. But for this we just need enough to help camouflage where we're doing the part. So we're going to let that dry and once that's pretty well dried we're going to glue this down to her head. This, drew, this glue dries pretty fast is the other thing I like about it. If you want it to dry to its complete strength I think it has to dry overnight but to continue on with a project it it gets dry enough that you can do it pretty quick and that's one thing I like about it that and that it's waterproof. So I'm just going to glue this down on top of her head and making sure that I get it lined up where the cuts are, are right, you know, for the ears and that it covers up the holes in her head, especially uh, there at the top of her forehead where the hair was originally stuck through when she was a monster high doll. So this is how it looks so far. We've got that little piece coming out from underneath and then we've got the the big section that's going to be the part up on top of her head. Now we want to get that out of the way because as you're gluing if you don't do this you're going to get glue into that because you're flopping it around turning it and you'll eventually get glue in it. Trust me I've done it so many times. So the way I've uh, ended up doing this to help keep it up in a way is to use a pipe cleaner. 
and just keep wipe, wiping it, wiping it, wrapping it around the hair. So I had, you know, it kind of stands up and away from the head, which is like, now this front piece, I'm just going to tape it down to the body to keep it out of the way. So I don't want to get too much glue around that either. And now to protect her face, I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and I just cut a uh, shape at the top, sort of like a face shield. So just do a little inverted U shape. And I put that over her face and then I tape this around the body. So that kind of helps protect the work that we did on her face. As much as I think I would do the face up, you think you would do the face up after the hair, you just really, you know, it. I guess it's six of one and half a dozen of the other, because if you do that, then you have to cover up the hair to spray the face with Mr. Super Clear to seal it, and I've just found I prefer spraying it before the hair is done. Now I'm just cutting off some excess piece of the wig cap that doesn't need to be there, making sure that, you know, it still covers up the holes on the back of the head. And now the same process that I use all the time making wigs. I start at the back and I just put a line of glue based on the amount of hair that I have to put down. And then I cut the edge of the hair to make sure that it's straight and there, it, you know, it's not jagged. And then I press that down and I use my thumb in an upward motion towards the crown to press it so that the glue goes up instead of down and just pressing the fibers down into the glue. Like I said, I, I do have a lot of other wig making if you feel like you need more that I'm giving here, I, although it's pretty pretty much all that you do. But um, if you do, there's more that are focused specifically on wig making that you can look for in my videos. So, I start at the back and then I go around to each side and then I do the front and then I come back to the back so kind of you make a circle just keep making a circle until you end up at the top that way the glue the last glued part that shows is at the top where that part is and when we take that down it will cover it so the section that I lost, section 13, mwah, <laughs> was the part where everything was dried and I'd take the uh, pipe cleaner out of the hair and let it, you know, come down and everything. So you'll miss that part. I, I apologize. I don't know what happened to that section, but it mysteriously disappeared. So now we're just working our way around on each side. And when you get up to the front section, you want to be more careful about making sure that you don't get the glue squeezed out under the hair and onto the face of the doll. So just be careful with how you, you know, where you put the glue. You don't want to put it right at the edge or put just a little bit back from the edge. Then you put the uh, hair down and press up again towards the crown so you're not moving the glue towards the face. That will make the hair look really unnatural because um, the glue will show and the part that, that where the glue sticks out, it'll stick out further than the other hair. <laughs> so you can see right here, I'm putting the glue down just a little bit back, not a huge amount of glue. And then I'm being very precise about my placement of the hair and then using my thumb to sort of move the glue away from the edge of the face and the edge of the wig cap. And also use, I use my pointy tool and I'll show you in a minute when I get really close up to areas that I can't use my fingers to spread the glue, I use the pointy tool to just kind of press it down into the hair down into the glue. That's another use for Mr. Pointy tool, which I think I've told you before is like my favorite tool that I use on every project for a variety of, of reasons. And also, see, that's my pointy tool, Mr. Green pointy tool. So you just sort of press it down and roll it, roll it away 
from the edge of the hair. And you also don't want to get it into the hair that's coming out of that cut. If you do, that's going to make it hard and it won't look natural. So I'm just also kind of pulling that hair forward. It got pulled back a little bit, so I'm just using my pointy tool to pull that forward in the cut. So I want that to be as close to the front as possible. So anytime I get up near where the that cut part is, I'm going to probably use the pointy tool. Now, obviously it does get some glue on it, so if you get glue on yours and it and it uh, dries and you have like this, you know, glop on it, a really easy way to get it off is I keep the spongy kind of sandpaper that I use on my Blythe dolls or any, well, any of the dolls where I have to sand their face. And I did, I think I showed you that in the um, video we did a couple of videos ago where we customized that little pull-up doll, the mini pull-up. It's uh, the Scotch brand, and it's like a, a foam sponge, but it's got sandpaper on one side. If you take that and just wrap it around the uh, sandwich it around the pointy tool, and then move the pointy tool back and forth, you can get the glue off really easily. Okay, so we're getting really, really close to the to the edge there. So you really want to be extra careful. Here's where you can really ruin your wig. You do not want to get it up on that hair that's coming out of the out of the top. So don't put the glue right at the edge. If you do, I promise you, it will get on that hair <laughs> no matter what you do. And you know, just use the minimal amount. If all of the hair doesn't get stuck down, that's okay. I mean, you can pull it off if you have to, or you could put you could use your pointy tool, put a little bit more glue on the pointy tool and then put that down on top of it, which I think I probably did some, but you can kind of see there where it gets darker, that's where the glue is showing through, so you know that it's that it's attached. So these are the final stages here, we're just getting all the hair we can up close to this so that we're assured when we pull that out that it's going to get covered up. And this is, I guess this is the last side. So get ready for it to skip ahead after we get this section put down because section 13 is missing. All right, so we got the hair all done. I did wash it after this, after I took the top part down. I did take it in and shampoo it. And I do use a conditioner with it. Then I came back out and dried it with a hair dryer. Now you do not want to comb this hair when it's wet. Just trust me, you will pull, you'll just pull it all out. It's, just, it's nearly impossible to comb it while it's wet. So just um, blow it and, you know, let it a little bit get dry. Then you can comb a little bit and then you can blow a little bit more. But really, if you can, just leave it overnight and let it dry. And then you can comb it because the glue holds it pretty well. You, I mean, you're going to get some shedding. There's, that's just the nature of, of the product, but... Um, I promise you, if you try to calm it when it's wet, you will be very, very angry and upset with yourself. <laughs> I dried it. Yeah, I've done everything bad, so you don't have to. <laughs> All right, so it's looking like I think we're finally getting to the final part. I thought that other one was the final one, but I guess this one is. I got a little bit closer. Really walking in the danger zone there. But I think it, you know, it turned out where everything worked really good. I did not end up getting glue on the part hair. I was thankful for that. And uh, got most of the hair on there that I wanted. You know, this, like I said, it's kind of fortunate that Sarah Jessica Parker was wearing a wig. Because it kind of looked like a wig. And so this will look like a wig. And that'll be good. So just a few last pieces here, and then we'll be pretty much finished. I think this may be the last one. I keep saying that, and then it's not. That's crazy. Well, it looks like it's so close. But um, it's better to do it in small stages, like small steps, you know, using a little bit of hair at a time than it is to try to put a whole glob of hair. 
All right, see, there's where it skipped. That's section 13, gone. All right, so you can tell it's washed and it's blow dried. It looks really beautiful. We've got our part. Now I wanna uh, make this sort of stand up away from her face. So I'm using my little craft iron and be really careful not to get it on her face because it will melt it. But this is great for um, making the hair sort of sit down where you want it to. I also put it down on top of that part to press that down so it's not standing up so much from her head. And then also on the other side of the part, I'm just sort of ironing that up so it's going to stand up a little bit. Otherwise, it just tends to want to just stick straight down over her face. And now I'm just taking my little curling iron because she does have some curl in her hair. There's pictures of her where it's like really, really curly. And then there's pictures of her that's just like wavy and messed up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put some easy curls in here. Trim up the edges of the alpaca fiber where we have where we need to. It's a little bit uneven, and uh, then I'm going to run a pick through it and sort of separate the curls so that it's a little bit messy, not you know completely looking like she went to the witch beauty shop. <laughs> and that's all we're going to do to her hair. Eventually, once we get the costume made. I'll probably put some spray on the top just to hold the part in place and everything. I'm not going to do that right now because we're going to be moving around a lot while we're making her costume. I'll just put something over her hair in the next video and, uh, you know, because I want to protect it. So here's how we turned out. And you also missed where I put the little mole on her chin. She does have a, a beauty mark or mole or whatever there on her chin. So I did put that on. I guess that was in section 13 too. Who knows? And, uh, that's our finished girl. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. That always helps. And stay tuned. And as always, I'm asking you to subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thanks and bye.